Hello again and welcome back to another video. I'm Zipper Spark and you're watching my FTP Continuum Let's Play series. In this episode, I wanted to do a bit more with the uh, ME system. So I was looking and this seems to be kind of the next thing it's pointing us to. We could look at the, the matter condenser or um, the uh, like the, the the spatial storage, or I guess this is not spatial storage. This is just higher level storage. Um, I guess we don't have quests for the spatial storage, but um, I wanted to try and do this because this is the way you would get to the um, the wireless terminals. Um, now this is the fluid. So we would need to do that. That's super easy to make and then, you know, get into the, yeah. So the one, yeah, one little thing that will control it all. But before we do that, um, I wanted to show you something. So on the last video, um, Ricky made a comment with regards to the um, the subnet stuff for the storage where you can have pretty much all of your storage behind one channel on your main network. Asked if it was possible to put any of the auto crafting behind um, in a subnet. And I was like, well, not really. It doesn't work that way. And um, we kind of show you because the way um, actually, I don't want to go down here quite yet. Well, I can go this way. It's over here. So we've got, yeah, don't look behind me. There's spoilers. <laughs> but, so we've got the, the little subnet thing there. Um, and then another one there. And so the storage is all behind it. Well, I had the thought, well, what if this is an interface? What can you do then? And you do like I just have two interfaces together and the kind of networks kind of talk to each other through that um, and it does kind of work but the, the interfaces that you see um, and let me hop back up here the interface you see it's this and so you can put patterns in you can say hey I want you to keep something stocked in here and then this becomes like a um and uh inventory that you can just you know interact with and pull stuff out of um but it doesn't work the way that you want for um the auto crafting so let me show you some of the testing i did so let me hop over to a creative test world that i was doing some experimenting in and I'll see you in a second when we're over in that other world so hold tight okay so welcome to my creative world so I've got this um in the, the controller here I made it real big but I you know it's not needed um currently there's only a few things in here um that might elude what the, the, what the interfaces have there might allude to it so here we've got um one interface and i labeled it grinders and then here's the other interface and so in here i have a pattern that turns the certus quartz crystals into certus quartz dust and we needed some sort of storage on the network that's what this is doing it's just storing there's nothing in there so this network is empty um this is not necessary for what I'm about to show you, but I'll explain why this is there in a minute. So we can do kind of crafting. So anything that, so when you request the craft for this pattern, it will send the items through the interface. Well, they go into this interface, which puts them onto this little subnet here. And they end up going into the storage here because that's, the only place to put them 
Well, then I have export buses exporting this crystals into grinders. And I just put, oh, well, I didn't mean to punch it. I have to set it up again. So input that side. Output top. All right. So we've got the, the grinders all around and any, so each of them are set to certain quartz crystals. So if I come over here and I say, hey, these dust here, that's all well and good. I want some more. If I come and I say, give me more. Now the recipe, I have it in multiples of 64. Um, so if I ask for 64, it'll do one craft. If I ask for more, it'll do two crafts of 64, so I'll get 128. Now, 200 and, no, 512. Yeah. That's a multiple of six. So it says, oh, I've got all that. I can do it. So you tell it to start, and you look, and it's in there. So you can hear them going over here. Now these end up going, you know, four times as fast as one. So in a way, all I did was parallelize it to make it go faster. Um, and you can see the craft coming back. They're, you know, they're, they're counting up pretty quick. You can see here the number of crafting is going down. So it does speed it up a lot faster than one will. But honestly, this is something you can do without subnetting. So I don't understand exactly because even with only one one channel. So instead of this, well, this is we're actually using two channels because this is the output interface. Because um, you can't pipe into these flat ones, you have to have the big ones. And for some reason, I don't know if I could. But it didn't seem like having the flat one here worked, or the the, the block one here. Um, maybe I just didn't figure to do it right, and you can, but I don't know. But either way, you can have the pattern in here, and then inside here, where um, right now if you, if you go under, I just have the energy source down here. So you could put, you know, these here. Or I guess it would be this way, wouldn't it? So this would, you know, pipe it to all four of those. And then this would be the only thing on the network. So anything that comes in here would be piped into there. And, you know, you can, I don't know if you've ever played with these, but. Then we wouldn't need the rest of this altogether. So in a way, like you can put auto crafting behind it, but that's probably not what we wanted. Um, so then the, the, one of the thoughts was, well, what if you just have your processing units behind the subnet? Well, that doesn't actually work. So if I disconnect this one, so this one's not connected, and I want to do that same craft, I don't have any available, I can't start it. So it's not even recognizing this one as existing. But if I were on this network and I had, you know, something, a pattern in here, then it would use this one. So it can be beneficial for this if you need it to be, if you need the auto crafting down here. But I mean, doesn't seem like it's really necessary. So then I had a thought. Well, what are the some of the other things? Because these export buses will just try and export as much as they can until they can't anymore. And you know they can hold a stack in here, but that's about it. 
So my thought was, well, what if we did that with empowers? The display stands only hold one item at a time. The empower only holds one item at a time. So it doesn't matter how many multiples of whatever item we have, we can put them in and have them run just fine. So I set it up, um, and I'll, I'll explain why you actually need to. Um, you can put multiple um, things in here. So like here, if I wanted the empowered redstone or stonia, I could put redstone, bricks, red dye, and nether bricks, and the restonia crystal blocks in here, you know, make a pattern for it and put all the items and, and everything and, um, and have them all use the same one. And then it was just depending on which craft to do it is which recipe it would send it. And here, um, yeah, it would, it would do that. But if you're going to do that, you want to turn this on so you're not duplicating the recipes in there. So it, if you had the two patterns, let's look here, let's pop down here. So if I had the pattern for the electronic circuits and the rest, red empowered Restonia crystals in here, I could send both crafts at the same time. And if they show up at the same time, I could get ha the items, half the items for one craft and half the items for the other craft, and then they would just be stuck. So then it's like, well, then you have to do one set of empower and display stands for each recipe. Well, you could do it that way, but if you do this, then as long as there's something in the chest here, it's not going to push more. And so it won't push the, the recipe ingredients for the Restonia block until the circuit recipe has been put around and the way it seems like the way these are working and um so i guess yeah here let me explain how this little subnet is working so very similar we've got the quartz fiber powering it and then um yeah the red and the blue are just different colors so they don't connect over here otherwise you'd need cable anchors all around so let's start here. So the, the interface puts the ingredients into the chest. Then the storage bus looks in the chest and makes any item in the chest available for the other bits on the network. Then in, on the display stands, I have programmed in the export buses, you know, one of the ingredients for each of, um, you know, for the craft. So if you did multiple ingredients, you would have to put capacity cards in here to be able to put all nine recipes in. Um, and then, so over here is the other export bus. I guess we were looking at the red network. And then we've got the import bus here that once the craft is done, it'll import it out of the empower and that will put it back over in the chest. Then this export bus puts the completed item back into the main interface for the on the main network and it works just fine and as you can see I set up the advanced circuit um, recipe as well so if you come over here and this is the beauty if I say I want 10 of these it's gonna say I have to craft these ones so I need all these pieces and then we over here we can watch it going but now once the first one crafted it now put it up here so you see down here it's crafting the regular ones and up here it's crafting the advanced ones and they're both going at the same time simultaneously so Obviously, if you want them to go simultaneously, you'll need two different setups. But it's just fun to watch. Yeah, and we get uh, extra setups here. So if we wanted that to not put um, the next recipe in until it had this ready, uh, we could just check that and then 
See, it's going to wait for these to go through before it puts the next ones in. So, watch it here. Yeah, so as soon as that, that it, the chest emptied out, it put the new set in. So, I thought that was amazing because now here we have see two channels, one for this interface and one for this interface. And then it almost works out perfectly that this sub network here uses all eight channels. So we have six export buses, an ME storage bus, and an import bus. So I just thought that was pretty cool. So I am going to hop back into um, the survival world and get this thing set up. Um, our existing empower, I'll probably um, you know kind of reuse that. I will move it, and I did. I crafted the four display stands, and then power, and I kind of have a spot for them. That was the spot in the basement that I was, you know, purposely not showing you. So let me hop back over to the main world, and I'll be right back. Okay. So here's my spot. This is the one that I just crafted. Um, and then this is, you know, kind of back in into the corner. So I'm going to take out of this smart cable, I'm going to put a dent or a, or no, the dense cable, put a smart cable there and then, you know, bring the regular glass fiber or the glass flux cables over and bring them down to Let's see, I had it so that the interface was by the chest next to the stand and then the interface next to the chest. So we can bring it down to this level. Okay, we don't need. Apparently, I'm breaking down my basement okay so bring that down here oh one more over actually do i have i do have a missing hammer okay so put the interfaces here one and two and I forgot my chests. So let me grab some chests real quick. Chest. One, two. Okay, so here is the first one. Now I need uh, I need to pull power out of these. So Ah, maybe that's why I had this over here. Oh, that's right. I turned this off because I was... I needed to um, zap some quartz to make this display stand, so I turned this off so I could use my zapper. Okay. So I've got this, and... Um, now I need that space. Uh, all right, well, let me get this figured out a bit better. I can't do this here. So yeah, at the, going to the top is probably going to be the best. And then I will have to, yeah, I'll have to power these networks somehow. Um, Probably like this. Now I'll put that there. Um, we'll do blue on top. And there. Let me get the red. 
anything. So now we don't actually want these connecting in. So we're going to want to put the export buses there. We just, yeah, we can kind of shove them in between there. All right. So now let's bring out the rest of this. Okay, so storage bus goes on the chest. Export bus here, 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 and there. Import bus here. And that is ready to go. So we've got all eight of those. So now we just need to program program it in. So let's get the regular electronic circuit first. Um, actually I probably should have all the things. So electronic circuit makes one of those. We need gold ingot. Uh, copper we need redstone and the refined iron plate okay and one more thing uh, silicone that's right Silicone. All right, so that is there. So now that goes down. I'm going to say oak chest. We can rename it. Nothing in oak chest. So nothing. Where is those nothing ones? I am curious actually would be an empty interface somewhere. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, an, an empty interface not touching anything. So it's not those, it's not these ones. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, we've got, oh, here, well. Fire it off. Let's just request a craft. Oh, middle click. Okay, so that should have sent all the items over to the chest. Okay, so let's get some space here. Okay, this can be the redstone, silicone. This one needs to be the plate. Copper and gold. Okay, so put those items back. Okay, now it went slow because we didn't have any acceleration cards. In my uh, creative world, I have acceleration cards. So now it created the circuit and put it back in the chest. So now we have to, have to do is tell the export bus to export circuits. Put that back in the chest. Now we're upstairs and we should have, what was it, you had 10 before? We have 11. All right, let's do 10 more. I will just stay up here and watch and see. Yeah, it's not instantaneous, it does take a minute. So there we go, C12. Wonderful. So I'm going to take this in power, put it downstairs on top of the other one, and get that recipe set up. Um, and then I will probably uh, fill them all the things with exploration cards. Not necessary. Um, Especially if you 
do the blocking mode. Um, and you can, my creative world, I also made it so the interface is pointed into there. Um, I did say blocking mode. Oh, I guess it had those in there already. Okay, well. Yeah. Yeah, so let me work on getting that put together and I'll be back in a second when I'm done. So, hold tight. I have to say, I am thoroughly impressed with how well this works. Um, I got... Yeah, I got the uh, the advanced circuit pattern uh, hooked in there, and you can you know craft them. Um, let's take these ones out and craft one, just so we can see it working. So if we look, it says it's crafting the one. Then as soon as that, uh, I mean, it does take a bit. There, now it's crafting the other one. I mean, I think this, this one takes the longest, but um, we have 15 in there. And as soon as that one finishes, we should get, oh, there we go. Our 16, yeah. So I'm so pleased that I have that working now. So wonderful. So let's move on. Let's create the security terminal. Um, and then the next step is getting into the wireless stuff. So the wireless receiver, not that big a deal. Um, the terminal needs a regular terminal plus some UU matter, this titanium iridium alloy, which you can make in the electric arc furnace from the advanced rocketry with titanium and iridium. Makes sense, right? So. Let's get this one, because we have pretty much all of that ready to go, except for, I mean, we have that ME chest already. Except for that um, 16K disk, or storage component. So let's tell it to make one of those. All right. And we need to hook that up somewhere. So looking at available spot, um, this is full. This only has three channels, and that's kind of going over here. I kind of wanted to um, keep those available for that. Um, the There's the 14 down there, because we've only using the two off of the one. Um, yeah, this smart cable we just put in only has the two. So we could put it there. We could hook it to this one, because this is using four of the eight. Um, I'm almost tempted to put it there. Um, I mean, I could pretty much pop it here anyway. So, security term 16, bio card editor. Yeah, don't really know how this works. But let's see if the quest here tells us anything about that. So you insert a biometric card to set permissions of the player. It is set. Use it on the player to set it to them. Unprogram the settings to become new default for players that aren't part of the ME system. Okay. Now, single player world, it's a lot less important that we have this, but it is required for the wireless, and so it's essentially the reason we have it now. Um, so let's look at the biometric stuff. Biometric, is it this? I probably spelled it wrong. This, no, here we go. We have that, we do. All right, no permission selected. Let's see. Okay. User is allowed to store deposit stuff. 
withdraw, craft, modify the physical structure, yeah, and access and modify the security terminal, yes. There. So I can mess with stuff, I guess. Initiate new crafting jobs. Let's try that. So I should be able to initiate a job. Um, let's just craft one of these. Yep, worked just fine. Now if I go take that off. Okay. Now can I craft that again? Yeah, it let me do it just fine. So, I don't know. Maybe I need to redo it again. Nope. Biometric card editor. Well, I don't understand. Sixteen security terminal. Not sure exactly, but um, it it's it'll be it. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. I'm sure it's fine. So the next thing we need to do is get into that. So let me get some of these other things crafted up, and I'll be back. Uh, we saw kind of how easy that was to craft. Oh, we need some of the flux dust. Yep. Four. There we go. That's one. That's one. Wireless receiver. All right, well. Yeah, I've got some component crafting to make, so let me get this ready and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. The alloys, they didn't take too long to go. Um, we do have it upgraded with the iridium coils, and so it's like an 8x processing time, so it's, it's really not that bad. So we're going to need our wireless terminal. Um, we also need this wireless access point, so that we need another one of these, I guess. No, another one of these. There we go. Now, I just crafted that because I didn't have it, but now I have it. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so this access point, I believe, I need to put down here somewhere. Too, right? Well, that will link it. Yeah, that's how you link it there. Um, and then this, I believe we can just hook it anywhere here. So we're using five channels there. Um, Pop it there. Now I can go 16 meters away. And I can put some of these booster cards in here. These. Um, looks not too bad. This ender pearl can be done in the grinder. Pearl makes two. Industrial grinder is two makes two in the blades. 
thing. Grinder it is then. Alright. Um yeah, so let me get some of those. And let's see. Well, first off, we should be able to test it. So from here, I can access all the things. So now this doesn't have the crafting in it. If you wanted the crafting, we would need this one. So we need one of those in the crafting term. That looks super simple. Is that like next on the list? Oh, that gave me four of them. That's convenient. Yeah, that is. Okay. So let me put these four in. I go 24 meters. So I should be able to go oh, out of range here, but here. So this is right about the, the, the limit there. So not super yet but um we want the wireless so we're going to need one of these you know i think we need more of these uh Crafting terminal. And there we go. Oh, it's not connected. Got to come down here and link it. Come on. Uh, there. Oh, link it here. Linked. All right. It doesn't have the infinity booster and doesn't have a magnet card, which go down here. Okay, so that's the magnet card. This is the infinity booster. Let's look at those. Um, infinity. That's this. So we're going to need the singularities and some nether stars. Um, so we will need to get the matter condenser. And I did. Oh, that's right. I promised a wither fight. And we're at the end of the episode already. Uh, well. We're going to do it next time. I promise. Like, like, like for sure. Double promise. Like, triple promise. I promise. Like, I promise. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's going to happen. With her fight. Next episode. I know that was the spoiler for their teaser for yeah anyways <sighs> I'm sorry I didn't remember it till just now I'm sorry okay um oh we should have got that yeah we did okay so that's the next one there and then this one needs the that so the matter condenser is you know the next thing on the list in order to um get that uh yeah so perfect but as i just mentioned that's going to be the episode and um i hope you hope you enjoyed Let me get up here actually Should I do the wither now? Yeah. Let me let me get ready. Um I want to double check a few things with these. So, hold tight. Okay.
here's how I'm going to do it this time. Now remember, promise is no mulligans. If this guy gets loose, it's up to me in survival with whatever I have stored or on hand. And I've got all my stuff. I didn't put any of my new stuff away. So build the wither sideways. Here, there's a two block gap. A three by three of the dust blocks as well, standing on one, and then the double layer bedrock. Okay. Let's do it. No hesitation, no regrets. Let's run back here though for the explosion. And that, my friends, is going to be it for today. So leave a like if you enjoyed this episode. Comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think of the um, Empower Automation and, um, I guess, Redemption for the Wither. Anyways, I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.